everyone. Today we are looking at chemical monitoring and management and the topic we will look at is the Haber process. In this topic we will look at the properties and uses of ammonia. So ammonia will be our main focus and we will look at the different uses of ammonia in our industry and the properties that make ammonia useful. Now let's look at the properties of ammonia. The properties of ammonia include it's a very strong melting gas and it's highly soluble in water. Now when it dissolves in water, it forms ammonium hydroxide, which is a base. This is a very important industrial chemical. And why it's a very industrial, uh, important industrial chemical? Because it's, because it's used as a feedstock for a wide variety of other chemicals. So ammonia can be used to generate other chemicals, which can again be used in the industry to form other useful products. Now let's look at some of the uses of ammonia. Ammonia is found in domestic alkaline cleaners such as window and floor cleaners. We will shortly look at why is that. It is also used as a refrigerant gas. Now, the other uses of ammonia include fertilizers. Now, let's look at what type of fertilizers are produced from ammonia. We produce ammonium sulfate, ammonium hydrogen phosphate, ammonium nitrate. Now from the pie chart, you can already see that more than half of the ammonia that we produce are used to manufacture fertilizers. So as you can see that over 80% of the ammonia manufactured is actually used to make fertilizers. So therefore, ammonia has a very significant use in farming. Now ammonium nitrate is one of the most important fertilizers among all the fertilizers that were listed in the previous slide because it has a very high percentage of uh, nitrogen than ammonium sulfate. And nitric acid is also produced from ammonia and it's a laboratory acid. You should be familiar from this, uh, of this acid from your school laboratory. And nitric acid can also be used to produce explosives such as TNT and nitroglycerin. And our, in our following parts, we will see why the production of explosive was important. Now nitrates are also used as fertilizers and nitrates are again manufactured from ammonia and they are very useful as fertilizers. So hydrogen, nitric acid plus ammonia gives us ammonium nitrate which is again a very important fertilizer. Cyanides are also made from ammonia and they are used to make synthetic polymers such as nylon, acrylics in the extraction of gold from ore bodies. Now let's look at how actually the ammonia molecule is formed. So you can see that ammonia is prepared by the reaction between hydrogen and atmospheric nitrogen. So in this equation, nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of ammonia. Now, as you can see in this um, animation, the hydrogens share their electrons with nitrogen and the electrons of nitrogen are represented as X and electrons of hydrogens are represented as dots. Now you can see a covalent bond forms between the two molecules. The reaction is also exothermic and why is that? Because you can see that 92 kilojoules of energy is actually produced as a product. So heat is released as one of the products, hence it's an exothermic reaction. Now let's look at some of the questions to test your knowledge. Question one asks us, Ammonia is used in the manufacture of which of the following substances? Now let's look at the list of substances that are provided to us. First of all, let's look at methane. Methane is a natural gas that is made up of carbons and hydrogens, so ammonia is not involved as one of the reactants in this process, so hence it's not question A. Let's look at C, polyethylene. So polyethylene is actually produced by the polymerization of ethylene, where the ethylene molecules join together and form polyethylene. Again, ammonia is not involved in this reaction, hence C is not the answer as well. Now let's look at D, beer. How is beer manufactured? Beer, beer is manufactured by the sacrification of starch and fermentation of resulting sugar. Again, ammonia has nothing to do with the manufacture of beer. D is not our answer again. Hence, our answer is B, which is nitric acid. And how is nitric acid formed? Nitric acid is formed by the reaction of ammonia and oxygen. And also we know that the production of nitric acid is used to make explosive, which was very important use of ammonia. Again, 
be the answer because nitric acid is made from ammonia and oxygen. Now let's move on to question two. Question two asks us, which equation correctly shows the use of ammonia in the production of a fertilizer? Now from this equation, we first need to figure out uh, which of them produces a fertilizer such as ammonium sulfate or ammonium nitrate or any other fertilizer. Now let's look at our equations. Equation B tells us that nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen produces two molecules of ammonia. Now, ammonia should be one of our reactants, but in this equation, it is shown as one of the products. Hence, this is not an answer because it produces ammonia and with that is not our fertilizer. We want to make our fertilizer from ammonia, not produce ammonia itself. Now, let's look at question C. Question C tells us three, two molecules of ammonia plus three molecules of oxygen gives two molecules of nitrogen hydroxide. Now, nitrogen hydroxide is not a fertilizer, hence C is not our answer as well, because we want ammonia to be used to produce fertilizer. So C is not our answer. Now let's look at D. D tells us that a molecule of nitrogen, uh, ammonia, and three molecules of sodium hydroxide forms a molecule of sodium nitrate and three molecules of water. Again, no fertilizer are produced in this reaction, so D is not our answer. So definitely A is our answer. So let's look at what A tells us. A tells us that nitric acid plus ammonia gives us ammonium nitrate. And we already know that ammonium nitrate is a very important fertilizer. Hence, A should be our answer. And why it's a very important fertilizer? Because it has a higher concentration of nitrogen than any of the fertilizers that we, ha that we have seen before. Now let's move on to question three. Question three asks us to justify the use of ammonia solution in window and floor cleaners. So why is ammonia very useful? What properties actually lets it to be a floor or window cleaner? So ammonia is an alkali, which means it's a basic solution. So apart from its ability to neutralize acids, it also dissolves grease that accumulates on the floor or window. So if you have your, uh, for example, if you drop oil, oil on your floor and your floor becomes very greasy, ammonia can actually be used to clean that because it dissolves grease. Hence, it's a very useful disinfectant. Also, the product is water soluble and thus the floor and window can be cleaned using an aqueous solution. So it, it's not a solid product that you're actually uh, putting on the floor to clean it because that won't be useful. It will make it more messy, right? So you want something that is more aqueous. So because ammonia is a water soluble product, that's why it can be used as aqueous solution and that is very useful to clean our floors and windows. Now let's move on to question four. Question four tells us to calculate the percentage by weight of nitrogen in ammonium sulfate. Now for this um, question, you actually need to look at the periodic table and you need to find these elements. Now why these elements? Because ammonium sulfate has the formula NH4 brackets 2 SO4. So in this formula, we can see we have the atoms nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen. So these are the atoms that you need to look at in the periodic table to find their molar mass. All right, so why is that? Because we need to calculate the percentage weight of nitrogen. So first of all, you need to find out how much nitrogen is actually present in the sample. So from the formula, we can see two atoms of nitrogen are present in the sample. So two times the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01. Again, you find this information from your periodic table, which should which should be here. So when you look at the molecule nitrogen, the top number is the atomic number and the bottom number is a molar mass. So you use this number. So 2 times 14.01 and now you need to find out the mass of the total molecule. So we can see there is two molecules of nitrogen. So 2 times 14.01. There is 4 times 2, 8 molecules of hydrogen. So 8 times 1.008. We can see there is only one molecule of sulfur, so 332.07, plus we can see there is four molecules of 
um, oxygen, so 4 times 16.00, which is the molar mass of oxygen. So this is the amount of nitrogen present, and this is the mass of the total molecule. And you times it by 100 because you want to find the percentage weight of nitrogen. And what answer do we get? 21.2%. So 21.2% of the molecule of ammonium sulfate actually contains nitrogen. Now, <clears throat> let's look at question B. Question B tells us to look at the percentage by weight of nitrogen in ammonium nitrate. Again, what's the formula of ammonium nitrate? It's NH4NO3. Now, in this molecule, again, we have two... More, uh, two atoms of nitrogen, so 2 times 14.001, and we also need to find out the total mass of this molecule. So to do that, we need to calculate the molar mass of the molecule. Again, we look at the elements. So in here, we have two nitrogen atoms, four hydrogen atoms, and three oxygen atoms. So we need to use this one, oxygen, and hydrogen from a periodic table. So again, like the previous one, 2 times 14.01 because there is two molecules of nitrogen plus there's uh, now to calculate the total mass of the molecule so it's 14.01 plus 14.01 4 times 1.08 because there is four hydrogen molecules present and 3 times 16.00 because there is three uh, oxygen atoms present again you times it by 100 percent because you want to calculate the percentage weight of nitrogen and the answer you get is 35.0 percent. Now, there is 35.0 percent of the molecule is actually nitrogen. So what does question C tell us? So between ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate, which fertilizer will provide the greatest source of nitrogen to enrich the soil? Now from our previous calculations, we can see that Ammonium sulfate contains 21.2% nitrogen and ammonium nitrate contains 35.0% nitrogen. So as a result, we know that ammonium nitrate will improve the nitrogen content of the soil more than ammonium sulfate. And why is that? Because the nitrogen is also in two forms, ammonium ions and nitrate ions. So in ammonium nitrate, you can see what a part of the molecule is ammonia and a part of the molecules are nitrate. So the nitrogen atoms is present in two forms, ammonium ions and nitrate ions. And this is actually beneficial because different soil microbes can utilize these different forms. So each of the microbes will be actually um, used to using different forms of ammonia. Not all will use ammonia or not all will use nitrate. Hence, you need different forms of nitrogens to actually make it useful for the soil. Now let's look at question 5. Question 5 asks us to identify and describe the industrial uses of ammonia. So ammonia is used to manufacture ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate and ammonium phosphate which we all know are very important uses of fertilizers. So nitric acid plus ammonia is used to form ammonium nitrate. It can also be used to produce nitric acid which is a strong oxidizing agent. So four molecules of ammonia plus five molecules of oxygen gives us four molecules of nit uh, nitrate plus six molecules of water. And then the nitrate produced in this reaction can be used. So let's look at how. Four molecules of nitrate plus two molecules of water plus three molecules of oxygen gives us nitric acid, which is the product we want. Now let's move on to question 6. Question 6 tells us that ammonia synthesis is an exothermic process. So what does exothermic process mean? That one of the products is actually heat. So during the reaction, energy is produced as heat as one of the products. So that's the meaning of exothermic process. So which of the following is correct? So let's look at A. A tells us lower temperature would produce a higher yield. Now, this is an exothermic process. So if we, if we lower the temperature, it will produce a higher yield since it's an exothermic process and heat is one of the products. Therefore, if the temperature is lowered, the reaction will be pushed forward to generate more heat and therefore it will increase the yield of ammonia. 
the reverse reaction is endothermic. So this is also true because if the forward reaction is exothermic, so the re reverse reaction would be endothermic because the reverse reaction will actually absorb the heat. Hence, B is also correct. Let's look at what D is telling us. D is telling us that energy is released in the reaction. As I've already said, exothermic reaction means energy is released in the form of heat. So when the reaction occurs, uh, for example, if the reaction is occurring in a beaker and you touch the bottom of the beaker, it will be hot because in this reaction, heat, is, heat energy is produced as one of your products. Therefore, D is correct as well. So, um, answer C, option C is incorrect. And why is that? Heat capacity of reactants is lower than that of products. Now, this is wrong because it's an exothermic process. Exothermic process means that the energy of the reactants, the heat capacity of the reactants will be much higher than the heat capacity of the products. Therefore, the answer is C because the question asks us which of the following is incorrect and C is incorrect because the reactants will have higher heat capacity than the products. And now let's move on to question 7. Question 7 asks us about some of the definitions involved in this reaction. So what is a reversible reaction? A reversible reaction is a reaction which can proceed in both directions. So the reactants will move on to form the products and then the products again can dissociate to form the reactants. So it's a reversible reaction. Both the forward reaction and the backward reaction occurs. So what is equilibrium? Now equilibrium is also a reverse reaction, but what's the difference? The difference is that a reverse equilibrium is a reversible reaction proceed proceeding in a closed system and with the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So the difference is that in equilibrium, um, the uh, reaction, um, uh, the rate of reaction um, uh, of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. Now what does question 8 tell us? Question 8 tells us to relate these terms, reversible reaction and equilibrium through the synthesis of ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. Now hydrogen and nitrogen react very slowly to form ammonia and at the same time the ammonia decomposes into nitrogen and hydrogen. So this means that the reaction is reversible because we can see the products uh, join together to form ammonia and then the product uh, decomposes to form nitrogen and hydrogen which are the reactants. So this means again the reaction is reversible. So nitrogen plus three hydrogen molecules form two molecules of ammonia. Again, these two molecules of ammonia can dissociate to form three molecules of hydrogen and two molecules of nitrogen. So in a closed system, equilibrium will be reached when the rate of the forward reaction, which is this way, is equal to the rate of the backward reaction, which is the dissociation of the ammonia. Now let's look at question nine. Question 9 tells us the synthesis of ammonia from its elements, which is nitrogen and hydrogen, is a reversible equilibrium. Now, what does that mean? Is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? So from this, we can see that the heat capacity is minus 92 kilojoules, and this tells us that it's an exothermic reaction, as the enthalpy change has a negative sign. And what does the negative sign tell us? The negative sign tells us that the product have less energy than the reactants. And why? Because energy is actually released, so the, there is no energy stored in the products. Hence, as energy is released, it's an exothermic reaction. Okay, now let's see um, question B. Question B asks us to state the source of hydrogen and nitrogen from this synthesis. So from the theory part, if you can remember, that the removal of oxygen from the air by the reaction with methane leaves nitrogen. Alternatively, another process that we can use is fractional distillation of liquid air. And how is hydrogen formed? Hydrogen is formed with the electrolysis of water or the reaction between methane and water over a nickel catalyst, which is the source of hydrogen. So these are the two uh, procedures by which hydrogen and nitrogen is produced for the synthesis. Let's look at question C. C tells us why must the hydrogen be free of impurities such as carbon monoxide. Now we know that in this reaction a catalyst is used. 
Therefore, if hydrogen has impurities such as carbon monoxide, it will actually poison the catalyst, so we can't use the catalyst again. Usually catalyst is a substance that does not get um, involved in the reaction and it stays the same at the end of the reaction, so we can use the catalyst over and over again. But if the hydrogen has an impurity such as carbon monoxide, it will poison the catalyst and which will not enable us to use the catalyst over and over again. So that's why it's important that hydrogen is free from impurities. Let's look at part D. So what is the name of the catalyst used in the ammonium synthesis reaction? So the catalyst used in the ammonium synthesis reaction is porous magnetite fused with other oxides of calcium, potassium or aluminium. So these are, this is the catalyst used. So the main catalyst is porous magnetite and that catalyst can be fused with oxides of calcium, potassium and aluminium. Now let's look at E. So the original catalysts developed by Haber were osm osmium and uranium carbide. Why were the catalysts eventually replaced in the industrial process? Well, mainly because these catalysts were too expensive. Not that they were not good enough, it was just that they're too expensive. So you want something that is lower in cost, but again helps us to produce the same amount of product. So therefore, um, magnetite is now used because it's a much less expensive catalyst than um, uh, osmanium, osmanium and ur uranium. So iron-based catalyst such as magne magnetite was much more cheaper. Now this brings us to the end of the question session. And in this topic, we actually looked at the properties of ammonia, how it can be synthesized, and also how the properties led to the different uses of ammonia.